What's up writers, Old Man Ronin here and welcome back to the channel. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit different type of video. Uh, I'm under uh, some uh, really hard thoughts or deliberations on whether I should sell the 2009 Harley-Davidson XL 1200C Custom. Uh, and I'm not really sure if I want to sell it or not because, you know, I don't ride the motorcycle anymore. And it's, uh, it's kind of hard on not only me, but also the motorcycle itself. Let me explain. I literally have put less than 100 miles on it this year. Uh, I just don't get the chance to ride it as much. You know, I'm doing a lot of content on other motorcycles. I'm riding the Meteor 350. I'm riding the Himalayan. Uh, we did some stuff with the Road King. I mean, I just haven't ridden the motorcycle. And it's completely unfair to the motorcycle. I mean, when you let motorcycles uh, just sit there, even if you have them set for uh, uh, winterization, uh, sometimes, at particularly long periods of time, it uh, put flat spots in the tire. It just, the engine uh, has a tendency to, even with a, a little bit of fogging in the cylinders it, it could possibly have some condensation in there and some some rust and it's just not a good thing just to let a motorcycle sit you need to run the bike so that's the dilemma should i keep the bike keep it as a garage queen and maybe buy an int or a gt uh that's the dilemma i'm facing so it's a big decision i have to make but uh, before we get into that let's talk about what i've done to make it the garage queen that it is today Well, you know, that was a lot of fun uh, showing you the bike off. Let me tell you about some of the things I did to it. One of the first things we did to the, uh, the uh, 1200 was built the engine to a uh, 1250 using the hammer kit, and I highly recommend them. Uh, the reason why I didn't go to the 1275 is because the amount of added size of oil cooler that I needed to have for that, uh, I, I just didn't think it was worth it because of the amount of performance that you're going to get. I think the 1250 is plenty for what this bike is capable of doing. And, uh, and it does run exceptionally well. As far as other things to the engine, we increased the throttle body, we increased the cam, we, uh, we gave it a fuel pack three for the, uh, for the uh, uh, ECU to give it a little bit better performance that learns. And, and I do a lot of times. If you'll notice right now, I've got you hear a little bit of popping in the background. That's because I got it on auto-tune. And the reason why I do that, particularly after a long time sitting, is I want to make sure that the engine is getting its peak performance because, you know, maybe things have changed internally there. I know it sounds funny to say that, but stuff does. Uh, and then after I go through it on my phone app, then I can say, well, you know, I need to put it back to normal uh, because... Uh, uh, this way it's already learned its stuff and you can tell through the graphs if you guys don't know anything about the fuel pack 3 i may make a video down in fact if you want to see more on the fuel pack 3 put a uh, comment below here and we will uh we'll uh if we get enough attention on it then uh, we just might just might uh do a uh video on the fuel pack 3. let's see where do we want to go let's go up the highway show you what this puppy will do besides bark because <laughs> she does bark man cruising right now at uh, 80 miles an hour I know we're in a 70 mile an hour zone but I just wanted to show you how quickly this bike can get up there I, I did pop the rev limiter if you heard it <laughs> but that's okay I'm not gonna top end it out I never do on videos uh, that's not really what this channel is all about but you can kind of see how smooth there at 80 well she drops down but how smooth there at 80 this bike runs and we're gonna cruise we'll, I dropped her back to about 74 we're gonna sit her right there uh, other than the fact that the seat is not exactly very comfortable, you could take this bike cross-country without any issues whatsoever. Well, another reason why I built this bike the way it is right now is because I really wanted to do the El Diablo run in 2021. Um, but with COVID and all the restrictions, particularly out there in Temecula, California and down into Mexico, it just wasn't happening. 
So I decided not to go on that trip because that would have been a that would have been a fun trip. I would have rode this bike out to Temecula and then rode down into down into Mexico with all the other guys from Biltwell and all these other you know good friends of ours. And uh, I just uh, man, it just wasn't wasn't meant to be the last year for me personally. But man, I mean, again on the highway, this is a this is a good highway cruiser. It really does everything you ask it to do at a high rate of speed. Fuel economy? Nah, not so much. <laughs> nah, not with all the uh, performance upgrades I've got on this thing. Some of the other upgrades we did to the bike as far as cosmetically was number one, this paint job. Uh, I have a good friend of mine that uh, lives in uh, Columbus that does some fantastic, he doesn't do like custom work, but his paint schemes, are not schemes, but his paint jobs are like glass, man. And I'll tell you, it's hard to tell on the video, but this thing looks like it's wet and deep. It looks like you could put your hand down inside of the, uh, the black. It's so beautiful. And we ch I chose the Mercedes-Benz black, the true black, they call it. And, uh, uh, you know, I've got the uh, side covers, I've got the fenders, I've got the tank obviously painted that way because I think it's just absolutely stunningly beautiful. Better than the vivid black that comes st stock on Harley Davidson's. And, you know, that that's a pretty color. Vivid black, that's what my uh, Road King is, it's what it's all my other bikes are. I kind of put them back stock, but this one I did not. I wanted to have something a little bit different and prettier. Yeah, see? I didn't have to turn off my turn signal. Well, besides the paint job, we put the Ultima Fat 48 spokes on it, along with the rotors and, of course, the main pulley, uh, to give it that, uh, to give it a really cool custom look to it. Uh, it really does, I think, make a difference when it comes to the look of the bike. Those Fat 48 spokes, albeit a pain in the ass to clean, they just look so beautiful to me. I love spokes on a motorcycle. I really do. I, I like the convenience of a. Uh, I love the convenience of a, uh, a mag wheel, but to be perfectly honest with you, I love the look of a spoke much, much better. It reminds me of the old days, and you know, it just it's just cool to me. I like the spokes, and these Fat 48s, man, are beautiful. Uh, not only that, we put some other Harley Davidson uh, accoutrements, see I said it right this time, on the bike as well too. We actually put a Harley Davidson OEM lay down uh, license plate holder. Uh, I, I was going to put one on the side, but I think it looks better up there. I kept the original looking uh, fenders on it. Uh, this has got a big 21 inch tire up front, uh, and it's got that thin look, so it gives it that pro street look to it. And so I wanted to keep that whole long and lean, if you guys remember looking at me, uh, did the walkthrough. You can see and tell it's got that long, low and lean look to it, like, a, like the old style pro streets of the 90s and early 2000s. Uh, besides that, we put a Thrasher uh, bar on it. This is what they call their low bend or their low rise. And it's more more like a drag bar. I did keep the original riser because I do I do kind of like the way that the speedometer looks with the uh, with the stock uh, uh, look to it. And I did upgrade the uh, mirrors to the the shorter version of the OEM uh, mirrors that come on a Sportster 1200. Uh, other than that, chrome grips, chrome levers, chrome controls. I did put an LED tail light in it. Well, guys, we're going to do a little pause here. Do you think I decided to keep the 1200 Custom or sell it? Put a comment right now. Well guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video today of my deliberations on keeping or selling the 1200 Sportster. If you did, make sure you give us a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, hit that bell notification button, share and comment. You know I read all the comments and comment on as many as I possibly can. Until next time guys, ride safe and keep her on two wheels. Oh, and you're gonna have to wait until the next video to me to tell you if I'm gonna sell this or keep it. <laughs> I know, right?